Hey folks, and welcome back to Six Days of Sacrifice. Yes. Anyway, so we head into this room. After we've just informed Trelvy what's... Yeah, we, we oh, to... oh my god, it says all postal cylinders. Postal cylinders? <sighs> Did you... you uh, so, when I went to Eureka as a child, there was those things that you, you put pieces of paper oh, and stuff yes. and you sent them away. Yeah, the, pneuma the pneumatic tube system, yeah. Yeah. I'd forgotten that there used to be one of those at Eureka. Yeah, because... You know the Eureka money which we're supposed to collect? Mm -hmm. Some idiot sent me like 10, 10 Eureka money for the tube system to like. I just wrote a note saying, I'm bored. And then it sent it off and then thought nothing of it because I didn't know what was going on. And then I just heard something come back like, huh? And then there was a thing saying, me too, have this. Here, have this pile of, mo <laughs> pile of money. You're like, cool. And there was another one that I got by cracking, you know, one of the safes. Mm -hmm. That was in the Eureka thing. The thing I really liked in Eureka is the uh, the infinity room. I didn't see the infinity room. I don't think. I was right. There was the, basically it was a curtain, and it, what really it was just this little uh, sort of C-shaped corridor. Okay. You know, a little bit in, long side bit, a little bit out. Yeah. But you know, you know, infinity mirrors. Yes. Basically, the walls of it and the floor and the ceiling were all those. Oh god! So you stepped into it, and it was just this. Beautiful thing. I think I did step into that because I saw about tw 50, 50 is only like, this is so trippy. Yeah, exactly. Because the uh, way you look, you'll see another you and it's like, yeah. This is spooky. No, but, yeah, but. But, yeah. Oh, look, it's trolley. Yes. And if, uh, if, we exam if we look at this cylinder, there's someone in there with skin as white as alabaster. I can't make out any features. I don't think they have any. And if we talk to Trilby now. Oh, it actually says Trollby instead of guard. Uh, and ask him anything coming back? And nothing from this room. But the more I think about the name John Defoe, it's like there's scr something scrabbling at the back of my mind. I feel like I'm on the verge of rediscovering something terrible. Something that almost destroyed me. Could you help me open the door? Nope. I have to go. Does oh. It, oh, does it actually say Trilby when you go? Yeah, yeah, it does. Awesome. Let me look at this book. Well, let me take this book. Add it to my journal. And at this time, another came to the tree that was the prince's soul, and this other was of the faith, but blinded by pride, and so he was the prideful acolyte. And the prideful acolyte threw down the guide, and subjecting the guide to the blessed agony of the body, he called forth the prince, and the prince crossed over to the land of technology. And the prince was much displeased, for the prideful acolyte would, be, would, in his arrogance, interfere with the destiny of the guide. And so he threw down the prideful acolyte, and the prideful acolyte became the puppet, and he knew the name of the king. Yeah, that was the hotel. Hmm. And with great fear did the guide take up the soul of the bridgekeeper, immune to its influence, for the bridgekeeper was also greatly fearful. And he hid the soul of the bridgekeeper away, in a place where it would meet its final destiny. Yeah, which was the ship. Yes. And the prince and the puppet took their message to the Order of the Blessed Agonies. And that was, don't fuck with Trilby, he'll mess you up. <laughs> At least don't fuck with him until he, until he dies. Then you can fuck with him all you want. Anyway, so we want to go to the prison cell. Yeah, but even I'm assuming even then when he's dead, still don't fuck with him. Hmm. Yeah. So the prison cell is, I think, this one. It's a lot harder to navigate this place when you don't have those little symbols next to all the doors. Mm. Yeah, here we are. Yo, Canning, talk to me. Yes, okay. Um, talk to Canning. Who is John Defoe? Ah, now we're getting somewhere. John Defoe is the bridge keeper. It is through him that the king will enter our world. John Defoe is all around us. And again, he's also drifting off somewhere in deep space. <laughs> Give me a straight answer, for God's sakes. There's no straight answer to your question. Yeah, he, he's right. Why'd you ask it anyway? Trilby told me the name. It's just about the only thing he remembers. Mere words will not fully restore a lost memory. A picture does a better job. What picture? I'll tell you what. 
If you can figure out by yourself what work Hardy was doing for us, I'll help you. Can you figure? Can you tell what it is that Doctor Hardy was doing? Cloning for Trilby from Remnants. Yep. Figured it was something like that. Do tell. She was a cloner. You had her creating multiple copies of Trilby. Yep. And when I thought I saw him come back to life, he didn't. It was just a different copy. Now the more complex question. What would we need clones of this particular individual for? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. Because you need the real thing. Nope. You don't know anything about the Defoe Manor incident? You need the clo thing close enough to the real thing. Clan Bronwyn Hotel incident? Nope. Huh, forget it then. In the needs based on the thing that in to be close enough to the real troll bit to uh, set off the trigger, I'm guessing. Nope. Really? Newborn often reacts positively to an image of its mother. That's all you can give me? Yep. I'm not your personal advisor, boy. No, you're a massive git. Okay. Feed out. Open the door. Open the fourth. Up on the fourth wall. Yeah. Remember the last time we tried doing that? Oh yes. Let's not try opening the fourth wall. Fourth <laughs> wall. Open this door. And we get Oh yeah, now we need to search the dead body. And look, someone's fucking that dead body. Yes. I think the ID card she wore bore her picture. If I can show you where where is the ID card? Where did it go? Open the door, walk right to the blast door room. Yep. Excuse me. Alright. Um... Okay, open the right door, walk right to the blast door room. I thought that was the blast door room. Yeah, it is. Phoning. Phone Janine. You have Dr. Hart if I have to keep. In the sleeping quarters. Don't tell me to come out. I don't understand anything. Bloody, 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 blah. Talk to you later. Okay, so she's in the sleeping quarters. So go to her. Okay, so office, security, sleeping quarters. Okay, phone. Call Janine. Do you have Hearty's ID card? Not Janine, can I borrow it? I'm not coming out. Can you open the door a second to pass? No. Do you notice any changes? No. Honestly? Yes. You don't see it transforming? Nope. Isn't it always like that? You're just going insane. No, she sees it as the cell the seller of the uh, the, the faux manor seller. Hmm. We first saw it as the steel chrome. Yeah. Know. Uh I've seen what's inside the hub. I've got the image on my phone, I'm sending it to you. I see it. Just some old ruin. Yes, I see. It's funny, but when I see this, I don't feel so afraid. Where she, a place where she can find peace at last. Will you help me get there? 
You'll have to come out the sleeping Oh doors. dear. Fine. I'll wait for you outside the hub. I don't like the way she's saying peace at last. Hmm. Not surprised. Janine, talk to me. Do you have the ID? Yes, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give gimme the ID card. And I can I can wave it in Trilby's face. Thanks. Oh shit. Oh we're just gonna, you know, bug off over here. Yeah. Bye well, bye. I'll borrow that ID card and run this way. <laughs> well, I say run. Oh, open door to Oh, uh Looks like someone forced it open. Trilby, I'm guessing. Yep. And <laughs> Yep, give ID to Trilby. Take a look at this. And he goes, You know her? Hearty. Can I meet her? No. She dead. Hearty, dead. I... Oh, Jesus. It wasn't me. I used my hand. Hearty, of course. That was not so... Philip. Philip, yeah. Hearty. Didn't deserve... Why are you doing this to us? Calm down. You're freaking out. I apologize. Some memories returned and caught me off guard. This door... I think we can both find the answers we seek. Bloody bloody blah. Seems like a good place to start as any. So door from the left. Good, let's uh Ah No. Stay away from me. Ah no What on earth's the matter? It's him! Oh god, I'm so frightened. Wait a second. Trilby's the one you're scared of? Who else would it be? The tall man? John Defoe? Um, the mad cult? Why are you so afraid of him? What do you think he'll do to you? I don't know. I don't know why I'm so scared. Just look at him, I feel like I'm going to faint. He's lost his memories. He won't hurt us. I promise. We need him if we're going to open the door. Because I still only have one arm. Once it's open, get into the hub. Let's get these wheels turned. Can you just stand between me and him? <laughs> Would that help? Have, 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 having a half crippled council worker standing between you and the cat burglar? Maybe the fuse is blown. Yeah, I've got to go fix it. I have to get in there. Okay. You alright? Yep. Uh, walk left. Wait, so, so far, from what I can see, five days has been the longest. Mm. Also, the shot is suddenly enough. Yeah. Third door from the left. Wait, that's. Yeah. That's that one. Take documents. I'm not even sure why I picked it away. The staple may come in handy. I'll take it out and throw the documents away. <laughs> Open. Okay. Storage room. Security camera room. Open fuse box. Y 
use staple on the fuse box. That'll just do the trick. Uh, open the door, walk to the blast door room. Ah. Oh, excuse me. Where's Janine? She went on her head. She tried to stop her, but she just ignored me. Come on. Walk in. Oh, look. Two more trilbies. We are doormen. We, our task is to stand here always. Did a woman pass through here? Yes. Yes. Why didn't you stop her? Our task is to stand here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Not to monitor who goes in or out. <laughs> yeah, I, I get the feeling this is what would happen if you... It, what, what, what would actually happen if you put Trilby in charge of guarding <laughs> stuff. Hmm. Am I Am a clone? I clone? Yes, yep. you are. Unfortunately, yeah. Ah. I did consider it as one of the likelier possibilities. My <laughs> brain explains pretty much everything. And I, as for why they're all dressed like Trilby, Shall we we'll continue? find out quite soon. Are we going in? I'm scared. You don't know what to expect? I've seen what's in there on the security camera, but... A bunch of ancient ruins. But I don't know. It's like what Janine talked about, a completely irrational fear. You need me in danger, I know, I know. Okay, let's do this. Look where we are. Oh, it's the Four Manor. Yep. Or is it? Mr. DeCabe. Janine? Whoa. What's going on? Where am I? Theo? Are we in the hub? I think so. But this isn't the ruin I saw on the cameras. I know this place. This is where he lives. How do you know? Because this is where I destroyed him. <laughs> where I thought I destroyed him. Where I tied his spirit to his bones and set them on fire. <laughs> but that was just a movie. No. Nope. No, nope, it really happened. Look out. Oh, look. Trilby died again. What's happening to the walls? Oh, look. No, not you. No! Run. What? Okay, I think now we're actually scared of Trilby. Yeah, Janine, wait. Do you understand Theodore DeCabe? No. No, I don't understand. Don't understand why I'm being put through this nightmare. I don't understand the things I'm seeing. And I don't understand why you can't give me a straight, simple answer. If straight answers are what you require, then I will accommodate you. The house you saw is called Defoe Manor. It does not, however, physically exist. Wow, it's what a are construct you... of John Defoe's mind. So why is it here? When he died, his mind and body went into his house. When Trilby burnt it down, he assumed they were destroyed. Gets, they were just both destroyed. Ah, so there wasn't. Hmm. Well, the body was destroyed, but... Defoe's mind clung to the ruins, which is where we are now. The Order of Agony, Busted Agnes built this facility around it. Measures had to be taken to ensure the infection wouldn't spread. What measures? Let me reiterate what the cultists asked you. Why was Samantha Hartley employed to clone Trilby multiple times? I haven't a clue. Clues you've had plenty of. Do you know why? No. Why Trilby? He's, I know he's important for one of the prophecies. Well, yeah. But his part but of Jafon the prophecy... But Jafon is scared of him. Yes. John Defoe killed him. In the manor. As soon as Trilby was removed... John Defoe came... came yeah, yeah, yeah so. John Defoe walked out a door and started shanking people. For a wraith being crammed back inside your rotting bones is a traumatic and painful experience. And Trilby did it. And then he set it on fire. But then to then be shot down and set alight, unable to die, to feel well, the constant agony of body, mind reduced to ash. Yes. Well, Until then, then Defoe, feed it all, only his father. father but towards Trilby was in his mind, and the embodiment of 
Jesus Christ. Yep. And his mere presence acts as a ward against Defoe. Jeremy was from then on utterly immune to Defoe's corrosive influence, although he never realised it. Because Defoe is scared shitless of him. <laughs> well, so it should be a lot of people considering what he does. Uh, with constant presence of Trilby through the complex, could the evil of Defoe's mind be restrained within the hub? But the tall, thin man, the one with the coat, he's the head of the order, right? Nope. No. Yeah, he is the head of the order? Why does he keep killing Trilby's? I because he can. Because he's spo- he, sh- he's spo- he needs to. Mm, but I do know that the more of them that die, the further the foe mana bleeds into the surrounding complex. <laughs> as we've noticed. You're not ha- you don't have long. What will happen? The foe is a creature of monstrous violence. Hearty's fate was only be- only the beginning. Oh god. Is Janine alright? Mm. Nope. Janine. Stagger, stagger, stagger. Oh yeah, of course, cause, uh, and then we get that se- this scene that was written by Yahtzee to be a horror scene, but really wasn't. So he runs into the bedroom area, or tries to. Can't. Open the door, let me in. I'm being chased by a tall, creepy guy. Open the damn door. Fall in? There. I'm sorry, Theo. She's just scared. Yep. Keeps happening. Don't remember going into the hub. Yep. Waiting for her outside the door. Then was nothing. Next, in that room in front of you. Scared because there's something... Something is trying to take yes, her over. Yes, we know exactly what it is. Look at me, okay. Nothing's gonna take you over. I'm not gonna let that happen. That allowed to explain why she's scared of Trilby. I can feel it all around here, watching, whispering in my ear all the time. Janine. Just told me. Yep. Hmm. Something tells me not to. I ignore it. You know what's happening now. This was written as a horror scene. Oh god, something tells me to take it. Oh god. <laughs> Yahtzee wrote this as a, to be a horror scene, and everyone el- everyone was confused by him writing this to be a horror scene. I ignore it. Evil raging outside the door, we comfort each other. I ignore hey, look, it, really. Nipple. For love and pain, we bond. Yep. Yeah, he really shouldn't be doing this in the, in his state of body. No, by the sixth day we would both be dead. Yep. There we are in day four. I thought just the, the first bit. What is it now? Mm. His walking seems to be getting better. Hmm. What, what are you, are you doing? doing? No. No. Ah, the whole default thing. Yep. Yes, this is the problem with hanging out around the ruins of Defoe Manor. You start going nuts. Yeah, Janine's buggered off. Uh, are we supposed to be finding her? Open the... Okay, yeah, go out to the hall. Yeah, see? Well, open the second door from the left. See that Canyon is gone. <sighs> yep, Canning. Yeah, look, there's blood everywhere. Whoops, we killed him. It's Canning blood. I know that it's somehow it's splattered all over the cell. Yeah, except we did it without opening the doors. Oh look, it's Janine. Oh dear. Uh, Welder's mask. Oh, then we wake up. What's that door flashing for? What do you mean while walking right and open the... Th- uh... I don't know. Something glowing behind the door. It pulses in time with the pain in my head. Open the door. Janine will appear. Avoid Janine while walking right and open the third door to enter the shed. Okay.
Okay. Is it randomized again? No. Nope. Well, how are we supposed to ro ro ride her if we're going to. If she's. I think like this. Yes, you may recognise this door. No, I do not, actually. The shed. Oh. Take the pickaxe. When I touch it, pins and needles run up my arm. When I pick it up, it doesn't seem to have any weight at all. Yes, that might be because it doesn't actually exist. exist. Yeah. Let's see. Avoid. Get the pickaxe into the shed. Walk into Janine to wake up in the bed. Open the door. Yeah. Yep. So, then we walk back out. Hello. And then we go through that door. Ah, oh, the kitchen and the gaping hall for. Yep. And then we wait for it to get near and go. Pickaxe. Uh oh. Janine! Oh. Yeah, look, everything's back to normal. Yes. Except. Now there's blood running down the wall. That was a quick day, day four. Yep, on to day five. We're three minutes to go. Yep, well, ah. Meanwhile, in the far future, this of course is our resident celebrity. The Mephistopheles killer. Hmm? The ship. You remember the, uh, the, oh, yeah. our player character from Seven Days. Oh, yeah. Last year, the EFS Mephistopheles was launched with a crew of six. The appointed ship's counsellor, Jonathan Somerset, killed everyone. He reported for duty punctually on the schedule, except the real John Somerset was dead. Pushed down a flight of stairs. The imposter had taken his place. Our full security was dispatched. It was recorded uh, SOS distress call to the Charisma. <coughs> By the time security arrived, the man had slaughtered the entire crew. So who is he? No one knows. Oh, Malcolm Somerset. John, Dr. Somerset's son. I can't believe I said door. Student of psychology at Ganymede Uni. But he failed the final exam and dropped out. He seems becoming a ship counsellor as his dream. And he couldn't hold in his jealousy. So he ki Why did he kill the crew? That's why he's here. They don't know. Because he didn't. Mm. His profile is completely inconsistent with a spree killer. But isn't that serial killer? Best ki uh, is that he was found out and killed in desperation. But that doesn't explain the demented creativity, the sheer bloodthirsty relish with which his crew members were slaughtered. Yep. Because he didn't do it. One was impaled, and another was blind, and the first officer had her head twisted right off. Well, right around. Maybe the cops were dismembered and stitched together randomly into Frankenstein monstrosities. Yep. Certainly not the actions of a man simply trying to cover up a far less serious crime. Yeah, certainly not the actions of a man trying to cover up the murder of his own father. Yes, because he didn't do it. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, and they wander off. And now we are in possession of John Somerset. Walk to the tell door. What is it? Uh, I got tired of yelling at the guards pretty fast. Oh, look. The gatekeeper. I was going to think you'd, you'd gone forever. This shall be our last meeting. You'll get me out of here, right? Yes. What makes you think I owe you anything? 
You're the one who made me kill my father. I only encourage you to do what you already intended. <laughs> you promised me I wouldn't get caught. You wouldn't have been caught had the most of my... Yes. Hmm. But he already knew they wouldn't leave that locker alone. Do you know about John Defoe? Is it all part of some plan? But I did know it would come to pass. All I did was encourage events to take place as I had seen. That is, as he had seen them happen in the past. <laughs> you know they think I did it. All that senseless murder. I've been locked up in here for six months! I don't care about you or any of your bullshit. Just get me out of here and you'll never hear from me again. Rest assured, I'm here to release you. What do I have to do? Use the key and leave by the door. <laughs> what? You haven't noticed the locks on the outside? Besides, the guards outside will... We'll talk about that door. What key? Who are you? And then we wait. <gasps> Use hands on dropper. Someone sent me a parcel with no return address. <laughs> And because they're such good, you remember the Henry Simpson games where they get the people that check the 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 parcel what they got. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, in this case, it contains some kind of oddly shaped knife. Oh dear! It's old enough to be an antique, but it looks like a blade. I mean, with teeth on the end, like a key. Mm. Yep, it's a key blade. And if I can find the right spot, I will use the blade on it. I don't think so. Why don't you think so? Use the Use the left wall and a door will ah, oh, okay. Use your hands with the door. Use the wall. The door will appear. The door appears to be made of flesh. The, the door made out of flesh. Oh dear. Use the blade on the door made out of flesh. Walk down the stairs. Oh, flashback! There's John Defoe dying. Hey, look, we got blood on our clothing. Well, there's John Defoe dying again. Yes. Yes. Have you deduced what is happening? Not entirely. I get they're still trying to, you know, release Chizo. Hmm. Yes, but have you deduced what's happening in this particular scene? Oh, the more times he kills, or yeah. Well, what we first saw was John was uh, was Somerset killing John Defoe. Then but what we see not, uh, is it's, it's all the other deaths from John Defoe's perspective. Yeah. And if you look at what's happening to our character... It's getting red clothed. Yeah, the clothes are turning red, the hair is disappearing. Oh, so he's basically becoming the guy who's gonna... Yes, he is the gatekeeper. Or rather, he will be when he reaches the bottom of the stairs. So he basically just went and freed himself from the cell. Meta. Yep. Ah, the body. Looks like the corpse of an old man in the remnants of a suit tied up with strands of muscle and skin. So let's talk to this body. 
What happened to you, old man? I made a powerful enemy. You're alive? Of course. So will not let me die. Who's Chizo? Well, we know who Chizo is. He's a fate elemental. What is Chizo? Even where is he? Since he has a place as well as a fiend. To answer you, Chizo is a pain elemental. No, he is THE pain elemental. That fed on the petty anguishes of others, but then he got big and fat. But over time, they became more and more reliant on magic until their physical bodies were all but completely vestigial. They fought for more power by killing and absorbing each other. Chizo is the last one. A bloated mountain of gristle whose very essence crackles with magic. And now nothing but the most hellish torments will sate his hunger. He's the closest thing to a god of pain. I'm sure I'm sure you know who this is, but who are you? You ask a complex question. The name by which I know myself is Trilby. But I strongly suspect I'm not the original. I'm probably a clone, given over to Chizo as a plaything. Or perhaps that's my arrogance talking. Perhaps I simply cannot bear the thought that the real me would ever be imprisoned like this. You're the one who sent the yep. idol to space. It's your fault I'm here. I certainly have memories of doing so. You must be the man who found him. After the hotel, Trilby spent many years researching Chizo. He requested a vision of the idol's future from the Ministry of Occultism. He was well respected by them and they granted his request. He possesses the memories of the vision. He saw... <laughs> I saw what defined you, I saw what you became and realised I'd seen you before somewhere. But never mind. You want to redeem yourself, don't you? More than anything. And all you have to do is follow my instructions. What do you want me to do? I want you to kill me. <laughs> and don't pretend you're a stranger to it. You have Freyhorn's blade. It's infused with Chizo's magic. It's the only thing that can release this hold on me. I want you to drive it into my heart. The nature of the blade will infuse you with energy. You call it my soul, my life force, we don't have a proper name. Oh, shit, I want so... you to be the, give it to the one who needs it. Who? You'll find him nearby. He isn't physically here, but Chizo is observing him, and so he manifests. My life force will still save him wherever his actual body is. So in other okay. words, with... He's more becoming basically the essence of Trill... More with the full essence of Trill, in a sense. Yep. Uh, no, no, that was your fault. Remember, stab. Stab. Oh, look. And there... Is the real Trollma. Yep. Uh, it's Trilby's soul. I can feel it crawling around inside me looking for a way out. Okay, use Trilby's soul on Trilby's body. Oh, so we're stopping... We're stopping Trilby from dying at the end of notes. Oh, shit! And then it came you remember, you remember, you remember, Cause remember we told him to die. Yeah. And then he died, but then he didn't. And think, that's why. Oh. I should probably get out of here. Run. And now Chizo's pissed. Yep. Ah, look. Oh. This being here. Yeah. You will notice he's wearing a brown apron. Yep, I'd say he's dead. Ah. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna catch hell for this, aren't we? Why did he have to cut his own throat out? Couldn't he have just hung himself with his pyjamas like most of them? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he knew we'd have to clean up the mess. <laughs> Personally, I'm worried about how he got hold of a knife. You and I both know, if a freak really wants to kill himself, there's very little we can do to stop him. This is really painting such a good picture of the mental health professional. Yes, it, it is. Can you honestly say he didn't deserve it? I got a little brother just joined the Navy Medical Corps. Same age as that poor doctor on the Mephistopheles was. I can assure you right now that's not how Dr. Laszlo will see it. <laughs> no, not at all. Come on then. Let's fetch your body bag. Blackness swallows me. The furious roar of Jizo fades from hearing. I am free. Free of that place. Free of physical form. But the ebb and flow of time flutters against what passes for my body. 
caressing me like a lover. When I was a man, I was Destiny's prisoner. Now I will be her servant. There are men and women who must be guided. I will be the caretaker. And... Oh, Jesus, we're well over time. Oh, yeah. Day six. Okay, so... That, well, we're... let's end it, end it uh, as soon as we can on day six. Yeah, but that day six is the last day, isn't it? Yes. So the last part will be short, and the this part will be long. Okay, so as soon as we can save... Yeah, oh. You could not have saved her the cave. But there's still enough time to save yourself. What happened to her? Her weak defense has allowed John Defoe to crush her personally. In loving her, you tainted her. Tainted? What's that supposed to mean? This is the past affects the future. So do does the future affect the past. The yes, future it, is it, a dark it, one indeed. In literally, yes. So dark that its influence travels backwards through your lifetime. Leaving an eternal blemish on your soul that worsens as your fate draws near. Shut up. Why can't you ever give me a simple, straight answer? You keep asking him for that. Why won't you help me get out of here? Because he can. You will find the way out in the basement of Defoe Manor. What? If you wish to escape, go there. You expect me to go down into that madhouse? What about John Defoe? Enough clothes of Frilby were made to provide an escort. <laughs> <laughs> they will buy you the time needed to break through Defoe's defences. Damn right they will. You must combat his corrosive influence with of his mind on equal footing. Know him. Become him. Defeat him. We shall meet again. I wish you luck. Wait. Why don't you at least tell me who you are? Once I was a man. John Defoe destroyed all I had. But a gift gave me the power to see the destiny of all mankind. While simultaneously enslaving me to it. You and I decay our pawns in a game too vast and complex to understand. But a pawn that crosses the board becomes a king! Or at the very least, a prince. Oh dear. Oh look, there's a note on the floor. But let's save here. Two, so, yep. Well. So, in the next episode, we shall pick the last part of the Chazar series up. Yep. I've been gone. I'm Rewind. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.